Okay, so uh, this question for Ask a Neuroscientist is, if you can exercise a muscle by thinking about uh, a movement, can you do the same for empathy? Um, so there is some evidence that um, just imagining a movement uh, can activate motor representations in the brain and actually even um, activate uh, to, to a certain level the muscles in your peripheral nervous system. Um, and there's evidence um, from many decades ago showing that if you um, watch films of people running around, you actually burn more calories than uh, if you just watch a moving dot on a screen. Um, so that's you know that's quite sort of um, old data. So there's lots of um, evidence that that is the case. Um, do I think the same is true for empathy? Um, it's 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 hard to say really because empathy doesn't rely, as far as we know, empathy empathy doesn't rely on muscles in the same way that motor um, acts do. Um, so um, it's hard it's hard to know how you could even measure that. Um, so it's true. It's, it is true that if you imagine, um, uh, well, I mean, is it? I don't know if it is. You, there's probably it is probably true that you can train yourself on empathy to some extent, um, but I don't know that it would really work in the same way that you could um, train a muscle. Is there uh, any difference between men and women in terms of somatotopic representation of the genitalia? Well, somatotopic representation of the genitalia. And what my... is? <laughs> <coughs> so, is there any difference between the, um, the representations of the male and female genitalia in somatosensory cortices? So, uh, somatosensory cortices are uh, two strips of your brain, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, which are um, which respond to uh, tactile sensation, um, and in these parts of the brain you have um, a region dedicated for each part of the body, and uh, so your kind of feet sit up here, and your trunk, and your hand, and your mouth, and they sort of they sit in a pattern like that, and that's called a somatotopic pattern um, of the body. Um, so until recently, the, where the genitals lie in this in this uh, pattern had been a, um, sort of largely unexplored. Uh, so in the original studies, which were carried out by Penfield, um, he mapped the entire body, but the genitals didn't really seem to be in there. Um, so it wasn't really very well known. And actually, the way that the uh, the body's organised, so the feet sort of lie right in here, right in the um, in the sulci. And uh, as you come out, then you get the legs and the trunk, and as you go down, you get to the hand and the and the mouth and things like that. So um, there's a kind of body pattern there. Actually, it looks as if somebody's lying across the brain. Um, but the genitals don't seem to be where you might expect them to be. The genitals seem to be actually buried right in the um, sulcus, um, right next to the toes, in fact. Um, and um, I've seen conflicting papers on this. So I've seen one paper that says that the female genitals <laughs> are in the same place as the male genitals in the brain. Um, and I've, seen, I've also seen other papers showing that the female genitals have dual representation, one in the sulcus and one on the lateral surface. So um, I think um, what is the case is that the female genitals are really underexplored. <laughs> um, there's not that many <laughs> experiments um, exploring tactile sensation of the female genitals. So um, I think a little bit more work has to be done to, to say that they're different. But up and as from what we know now, I'd say they're roughly the same.